Kathy here from Kathy's Cute Creations. Today is the day to begin our Autumn Avenue quilt along from Fort Worth Fabric Studios. And that's the first sheet that you should be looking at. Well, actually, it's probably the second sheet. But if you're going to go through and make up all your colors and you need your sizes, that's what you need to be looking at, okay, if you're choosing your own fabric. So I'm going to show you all the fabrics, how I have them lined up. If you opened your package right off the bat, they are in order. If you went and just looked through it and scattered it out, that's fine. Just go ahead, bring up this sheet here. As soon as I can bring it up for you. Bring this sheet up and rematch up your colors and mark them. I've got little clips, which you'll see here in a minute. And then I line it up and then I stack it up backwards. So I'll have the P at the bottom when I'm when I've got them all laid out and they're all matched up correctly and I've labeled them. Then, because I start with A. So I take the P, the O, the N, the M, the L, the K, and I stack them all up on top of each other. And I set them aside. I start with the A. I iron it. I'm going to lay it out here on the board. And then we're going to go based on this sheet, which is the best thing that Fort Worth for Epic Studios came up with. And I'm telling you, this is your cheat sheet for A only, which is the background fabric. In this case, this time around, it's going to be a cream color. This is the sheet you're going to follow to cut it out. Okay? Then after that, you're going to go to... Fabric B on the paper here, and you're going to do what it says. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get started. And then what I'll do is when we get to B, or actually maybe I might try C or D, but I'm going to show you a sample of how I write it and everything. This way, if you know you want to keep it in order. Okay? All right, let's get started. Okay, so I realized that in the package, these actually came in order, so it's less confusion of trying to mix and match. So here I have them all laid out, so I can begin cutting. And you should have downloaded your paperwork. Looks like this. So what you're going to look at is you're going to look at this one first. And I don't know if you're going to be, and then I just got my papers in order. So here's the second one. I don't I'm not sure if you're going to do it weekly or all at once. I'm going to try to cut all my fabric out at once. And this is strictly the A. Okay, you're going to follow this to cut out A. And then you'll go to your paper to cut out the rest. And I realized Megan had this color sheet on the other side of the table. So I came back just to show it real quick. In case you have already pulled out all your fabrics, looked at them, and laid them down. And then already don't know the order. So this is the way you'd have them, okay? Now get your favorite cutting tool, whatever you're going to use. So get your favorite ruler. And always extend your ruler over the fabric that you're going to be cutting. And down on the bottom part too. So you have it overextended here as well as up there. Okay, if you can avoid having a short ruler like this where you've got to line it up and then you got to turn around and move it up, you may get off on your mark. Okay, so that's why we always have to go or we try to stress that you get a long enough ruler. It'll be one of the best investments you've ever made. Now, I always use a weight on the upper end down here to help me out because it moves and shifts and then I'm taking off the least amount. So I'll move it over here. It is folded in half. And the very first directions on your paper, it wants the entire length, that's the entire length, excuse me, the entire width, not the length. That is the width of your fabric, and it wants cut two inches. So if you count down here, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, two inch strips. And that's what you're working on, getting six of them. Then when we get done with that, you're going to do two and a half by 36 and a half inches. And if you're in doubt on the width, take your ruler or your mat, whichever you want. And this tells me that my length, and I've got to watch beyond that point, is actually the selvage. So I can't go beyond the selvage. So if I go from the bottom of this up to the top, I have at least 21 and three quarters, and you multiply it by two. So you, let's see, what did it say? It wanted 36 and a half inches. Here's the 36 and a half inches. So you already know that since that's 21, that's 42 inches. So you know it's long enough and it's not going to get your selvage in there. Okay? Cut six strips, two and a half inches. But first you're going to take a little bit off the edge. Now I'm using this ruler, which is a three and a half inch ruler. And I'm turning it upside down because I want to get the two inches. Now this is for right-handed people, by the way. If you're left-handed and you, you're going to do the total opposite, 
your fabric your fabric would be on the you know there's two ways to do it I guess if you're well, first let me show you the way that I do it so I measure my two inches all the way up along here butt my ruler up to it put my weight on it and then cut it alrighty so you can take your your ruler cut your side off here first measure two inches this is if you're left-handed now make sure that your ruler fits on your table don't have it half off and half on because it'll rock on you you get your two inches you take your left rotary cutter this is a right-handed rotary cutter only you can't use it on the left so you would take your rotary cutter okay so let's say that you're left-handed this rotary cutter can be used right or left-handed there's no direction to it you would have your weight or whatever on the other end and then you would start right here and just go all the way up that's one way to do it and then when that's taken off you just move it over to the left now that's for left-handed people and then take it and do your two inches just like that so we're going to go ahead everybody go ahead and cut your six strips and then we're going to be back this is the way that i do my organization if you don't have a clue and this is your first time and you just like looking for some new ideas so i take my large design board and i'm going to cut all my cream colors out which is my a and i'm going to put them all on this on this board just marking one tells me the color and the number so i'm not going to get it all confused then when i get done i'll show you what i do from here now if you're looking at my ruler here this ruler here i'm going to show you where the two and a half mark let me see if i can find it first so you can see here this little line right here that's my two and a half mark but it doesn't say two and a half i'm going to show you where it does say two and a half let's not go too fast on you here right there this is where it says the two and a half it's upside down because you know my numbers are upside down but that's on the two and a half from here to here i don't normally use the black numbers i just use the solid with the white here so go ahead and cut i'm leaving them all the width so i'm going to go ahead and cut four of them four strips at two and a half inches i've got it set up so go ahead and do that for yourself now i normally check mark showing that i have it done in case i've got to step away now i don't have a cat but if you all got a cat and they jump up there and mess up your fabric at least you'll know where you're at and then when if you look on here it's three and a half and three and a half twice when they got to the 16th three by three inch square they're going to decrease them and they're going to split them in half so you're going to have a one and a half by four so what i did was i went ahead and i marked how many three by three inch squares i have so i just marked them all along here and i got to end up with 16 of them then i went ahead and marked how many of these one and a half by four i'm going to create out of the three by three inch so there's 16 of them so you're going to end up with 30 two three by three inch squares you're going to set 16 aside and then with the other 16 you're going to cut them in half one and a half by four and then the next fabric you cut are two five inch squares and so this would be all the way down here and then you're going to break them up so they're going to be four two by two two by two that kind of thing and i always keep them marked as i cut them over here on the right so i can keep track of what i have cut now here's that second strip that's three inches I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my ruler on one and a half. Here's the little one and a half right here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this all in half. And you can do it the other direction if you want. You can cut the, the uh, four inch, but I'm going to do the one and a half. I think it's easier this way. And then it's all lined up one and a half over here. Now I have two strips and all I got to do is cut them all four inches. Now I have it laid out here on the table. Now all these rulers are the same brand. It's Creative Grids. I have to cut my selvage off first. So I look at the bottom of it. It's pretty well lined up right here. And all I'm doing is cutting it off. Otherwise those holes that are in this selvage, see if you can see the holes, that'll be in your fabric and you don't want that. You don't want that to pop up after you've put your seam in because by the time you put that quarter inch seam right here that'll all be in your fabric and you don't want that so i try to line it up on the line although i'm not using that line to cut by and so this has to be four inches so here's the four inches so i can go down to here if you're left-handed now would be the time to cut it or and i've been doing this all along i've used the right ruler 
to measure it. And so I'm cutting with the left one. So that's what I have to stay in because otherwise my pieces are going to be off just a little bit. Okay, because it, you're taking up space for the ruler that you're laying down here, but you're also taking up space for this ruler. I know that sounds kind of weird, but that is what's going on. So this gave me two of them and I need 16. So I'm just slowly moving up and that's it. Just do that and keep going till you got 16 or eight, eight of these strips actually. Now you're going to cut the five inches and you're only going to use two, but then you're going to use the rest of them for two by two as well as two by one and a half. So continue cutting out all the white fabric and then I'll come back for the next. There is all the cream colored cut out and then this is what I had left over. I have this little pile here, right here, and this piece here. Now, I would have had more, but I did make a mistake. So let me show you where my mistake was so that you all don't do the same thing. So bring up your sheet, your cutting design, and down here at number, well not number, but the three by three, when I cut all them out, I accidentally didn't cut out these two and went ahead and cut this strip in half. So what I did was I waited till I got all done cutting and then I cut it out. Now, when you get down to this part right here, for anybody that's new, the first thing you're gonna think is you need a four and a half inch square and cut it down to one and a half inch. What I did was I cut a one and a half inch strip and managed to get four and a half inch cuts out of each. The whole strip, one strip now, that was one and a half inches in width, gave me all eight, as you can see I need eight of them, the four and a half. Just so you know. Okay? So think about how you can, because this is actually the leftover fabric is down in here. And that's what I have there on the table. So I'm just going to set that aside with this and then go to the next color. Now when you cut out... Fabric B, I'm going to show you a little bit of it. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to cut out six three and a half inch strips. You're saving those all for week six. So I cut out the six and I set them aside. Then I cut out two four and a half inch. This is all by the width. Then I went to the next column and I cut out one three and a half inch and one one and a half inch which is what's sitting here on the table now is the time to be sub cutting these and marking them so i'm going to take the strip and let me show you here for those that don't know yet you'll take this strip right here okay you'll do one strip and you're going to cut four and a half by four and a half inch squares you're going to mark them for week four then you're going to take out of that those exact same strips now because this is in this um section I guess I could call it or this button this bulletin see the little this is a little bullet so all of these these things get done with that four and a half inch strip so you'll cut three and a half by three rectangles for week two and you're going to cut seven of them you're only using these two four and a half inch strips don't go into that next strip the next strip which starts right here so that one three and a half inch strip is to be subcutted into nine three and a half by three inch rectangles and four one and a half by seven inch rectangles and they all get marked for week two all right so let's go ahead and cut those up all right so the reason I'm bringing you back I'm going to show you this is one of those long strips which you're going to see a lot of this is F okay now normally I would just lay it like this because you know that's your that's the end because that's got the selvage on it but I'm folding it in half I'm coming up to the selvage, okay, so that I know that that selvage isn't going to be in whatever fabric that I'm cutting out. You can cut that selvage off. So I went ahead and I, I didn't iron the fold in there now. All I did was that. I have a ruler that's coming off the top and the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, now I'm acting like this is a great big huge piece of fabric. And I used my fold here as my starting point to line this up down here. Let me make sure you can see it. Okay, so that's the edge of my fabric down there. I went ahead and cut off this side. Now. This F fabric says that it wants eight four and a half by four and a half inch, uh, four and a half by four and a half inch squares. So what I'm gonna do is first, I can tell by this measurement, this is, now I can't go below beyond my selvage, so I've got 10 and a half, I'm gonna be safe, okay? So 10 and a half. So I know that I can get a four and a half and another four and a half 
that's going to give me four right there. So all I got to do is move this over, take my ruler. It needs to be bigger than four and a half. So I'm going to use this one. I'm going to cut it for my selvage off. I cut that selvage off. I'm lining up the lines of my ruler down here along the bottom so I can get it straight. So it's right up at the edge of the fabric there. Just like that. And now I can measure four and a half like this. And I'll put it on the line down here. And then I'll put it on the line up there, which makes it squared. And see, this is one, two, three, four and a half. And that's what my squares need to be. That gave me two. And this gives me two more. Okay. And four and a half. And now I have four, four and a half. And this is the fabric I have left over right here, which is quite a bit of fabric. Okay, I just wanted to show you that, that you can actually fold that strip when you get ready to do something. So now I just saw, looked at my paper because I've already got it written out on this little sheet and I need eight of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure another four and a half, cut it and then cut it in two. So I've got four more. So I'll have eight four and a half inch squares. They're all for week four. And this is what I put on my paper. I took a little, one of those little post-its right here. And it's got four and a half by four and a half. I need eight of them for week four. And I'm stacking up over here. Let me lift up my, right there. These are all the different weeks. So this is week two. That's week four right there. And then I think that's week six, the green one. So I'm just putting it all on that one. Now the underneath it is all the cream colored. I've kept it separate. There's two different design boards there. Okay, I want to talk about two things. I am on fabric O. The first thing it says, five by 22 inch strip, and you're gonna subcut one of them five by one and a half. Don't cut five inches into this fabric. Cut one and a half because it wants eight of them. And it's a lot easier to cut the one and a half strips and then measure five inches because you already know that you can get two in here, which is four and then four. So you'll have all of that left over to do the next, okay? So look at the pattern, read it, and then start cutting. Just because it's showing you automatically it's five by one and a half, doesn't mean you need to cut this fabric by five. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention real quick, because I saw it on this second page, on the second page of the directions, right there, it says all the strips are cut across the width of the fabric from the selvage to the selvage edge, unless otherwise noted. We recommend cutting all pieces on week one. Cutting week by week may require more yardage than listed. So it might cost you more in your yardage than what they have here if you go week by week. So I'm cutting it all out. As you can see, I'm gonna pan you up here a little bit and you're gonna look at my board, see how full it is already. And then when I get done, I'm gonna show you how I have it laid out so that you have an idea. And I got it all marked and everything. Now when it's all cut up and I've got it on this thing here, I have week two, three, four, five, and six across the top. I put all my scraps in a bag. I just put them in a Walmart bag in case I need to get in there and recut something because I made a mistake. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep it all on this large design board, but I'm gonna put week two on this small one. So all I do is just take the pieces. I mean, I don't know how they're gonna go in order. So I just grab them and just set them up here. And that's it. This is week two, right there. That's what we need for week two. So that's it. I'll set this aside and that's what we're gonna be working on week two. Then when we get to week three, we'll be working on week three. So I'm quitting for today. I've got homework to do. So, and my dog is having withdrawals because she hasn't been on my lap in so long. <laughs> the poor little thing, I tell you. I've interrupted her routine and everything else. So I can't wait till next week so we start working on this. But I hope you guys cut all your stuff out. If you haven't, don't make a big deal out of it. Split it up into a couple of days if you want. I mean, it didn't take me, I'm trying to figure out how long did it take me to actually cut this up? And you know, all those little strips, those were really fast to cut up. Okay, so it is four 
right now and I started at 10 o'clock this morning and I actually took a break because uh, I got on a zoom call real quick and then I went ahead and came back up or I didn't even eat lunch yet so I'm gonna go downstairs and probably make it a, a lunchy brunchy dinner I don't know but anyway I uh, I did go to uh, this morning because I got that package mailed off hold on let me um, I might as well look at the camera just a sec Okay, I can't talk too long because I just turned the air conditioner off. It'll get hot in here, but that darn thing makes so much noise. I have a hard time when I'm sitting downstairs editing my video because I can't hardly hear it. Anyway, so I got the package mailed off. I, uh, Megan and I went and did that. Then we went over to Dunk... Um, wait a minute, where did we go? No, we went to Panera's first. We got ourselves a sandwich. We each ate half our sandwich. Um, I, had, I sat down and ate half my sandwich before I came up here. But after that, we went over to Dunkin' Donuts. I got a pumpkin coffee, so I've got more than half left because I forget about it sitting here, and it gets cold, and then I just let it set. And she got an iced tea. So we both have our drinks left, and so I'm probably going to go downstairs now that I remember it, that my sandwich is down there and go ahead and finish my sandwich off. And so that's why I got such a late start. The post office opens at 9, so I got there just a couple of minutes after, so there was only one person working, so of course we had to wait a little minute. And then um, we just went about our business and hurry up and got home because I knew I had to do this. And Megan was tired, and so she laid down and took a nap and everything. So I wanted to get this all done. I, I have not worked on week two. I won't be working on week two today. Uh, like I said, I got homework, so it's a couple of different things that I'm trying to do. Plus, I'm doing a little bit of reading. Um, if any of you guys are following the Elevator Girl, which for anybody that's new on here... Uh, Stephanie Bond has a story and what she does is every single day she puts up a little bit I don't know if it's a chapter or a page or what but it runs from the first of July to the end of December it's free all you have to do is get on her website she actually has a Facebook group that you can uh, join also the good thing about the Facebook group is there are two ladies on there I cannot remember either one of their names but they rehash, they say it in their own words, and they tell you what happened the day before. So if you didn't know what had happened the day before or you forgot to, to get on it and, and look, you can get an ad-lib version, I guess you call it, because it's in their own words. They're not um, reading it verbatim. But it's a pretty good, it's, um, I want to say it's a, um, yesterday I actually laughed out loud, but I don't think I would call it a comedy, but it is a mystery, I guess. Sort of a sci-fi mystery because, um, it has to do with a ghost which she sees and other people don't see and she's time traveled because she went back to the year 1971 where this ghost is the ghost is traveling between her time and our time and our time meaning today because the story is written in today's time but anyway that's all I'm gonna say about it if you're interested in it, by all means check out Stephanie Bond and you can um, follow along and then every year she does the same thing and then when she's done with the story she actually has the books up for sale if you want to buy them okay so that's all I got to say so you guys stay tuned for next Monday for Fort Worth Fabric Studio so we can begin on week one and start our I'm gonna say a block I haven't even looked at it all I did was looked at week one and that was it I just put it all in my notebook I just haven't had the time so uh, I hope you guys follow along and you enjoy it. So that's all I got to say for today. Welcome to all the new subscribers and I'll see y'all next time. And as Megan would say, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring on the little bell. She'll be proud of me for that. Bye-bye <laughs> everyone.